What's up, Summit Park? Hey, this is the first weekend of the decade, 2020. We made it. Take that, Y2K. You know what I'm talking about? We made it. It's the first service of 2020, and man, we're just so excited about it. I want to take a moment and say a warm welcome to everybody watching online and, of course, everybody watching over at the South Campus. North Campus, can we welcome everybody at the South Campus? What up, Southside? Here's a, here's a virtual hug. So you just take that in, let it sit. There we go. Okay. It's amazing. That's what I'm talking about. People, I'm just so excited about 2020, all that God's going to do. We're, and we're talking about prayer today, and, and I'm, I'm pumped about it. Uh, if you're taking notes, and I hope that you are, because everybody knows note takers are history makers. They're world changers. You actually get that pergola of rich mahogany in your backyard in heaven when you take notes in church. And so um, it's true. It's in the Bible, all right? So if you're taking notes, the title of the message is 2020, the best year ever. Everybody say that with me. 2020, the best year ever. So we're talking about prayer today. And how many of you know there are certain times in life, there are circumstances, scenarios that lead to instant prayer? I'm talking immediate prayer, right? Uh, like, for instance, when you're driving down the road and all of a sudden uh, you see in your rearview mirror Red and, and blue blinking lights, right? How many of you know instant prayer? Hopefully not after you say something that you'll regret later. <laughs> and uh, and uh, It's just instant prayer, right? When, when tax season comes along, you open up your W-2 and you hope that you don't owe any extra money to Uncle Sam. When you're a student, you forget about a test or you're at work and you forget about a project or maybe when you see the thing that you fear the most. How many of you, you're like deathly afraid of, of snakes, right? You don't, you don't like snakes? It's justified. I mean, Satan, right? <laughs> right? Spiders. Who, who in here, you're afraid of spiders or you hate spiders? Maybe heights. Um, I, I hate that, that heaping pile of laundry in, 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 in my room, the corner of my room. Instant prayer. So there are moments that spark that. And I remember a time uh, when, when I had in, an instant prayer moment, okay? I had a near-death experience. This is a true story. I was in college, and I was driving my, uh, my, my first car, my 1997 Dodge Avenger. And, uh, and this thing, man, it was, it was held together by rust, a lot of miles, a lot of character, okay? But it had the sunroof. It had the, the leather interior. It had the CD player. I was probably jamming out to John Denver, leaving on a jet plane, Something weird like that was weird. And so I, I was driving, and, and, and so it was at night. It was a black car, and I was veering onto the highway. So I was on, I was on the ramp, and I noticed that there was a semi uh, to my left. And, and I, I got about halfway down the ramp, and I noticed uh, he's, he's not moving over. Now, when I had began to get on, on the ramp, I noticed there was nobody to his left. So I was like, oh, okay, he'll just get over. So I continued to drive at, at an increasing pace. So I get 50% down the ramp. I notice he's not getting over, and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? And I'm like, it's fine. He's going to get over. He sees me. Get 75% down the ramp. Notice, <laughs> he doesn't see me. And I'm not scared because guys don't get scared. I'm concerned, okay? I'm very concerned <laughs> in this moment. And, and so I get about 90% down, down the ramp, and I'm like, I'm like, drive it. And you know, like, you're like looking over, and you're, you like start like, you know, and you're like, you start making noises like, you don't even know you're making it. You're just like, ah, 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 ah. And, and I notice like there's a small gap here. And the ramp is about to end, but it doesn't turn into a shoulder. There's like construction equipment. There's a bulldozer. There's, there's a median block. And I'm like, these are all things that a 97 Dodge Avenger would lose to in a chicken fight, right? Like that, this is not, this is not going to end well. So there's a small gap. And how many of you know instant prayer, right? So I'm like, God, help me, please. I slam on the gas. And I'm telling you, every single one of those six cylinders of my 97 Dodge Avenger engaged, we shot the gap. Not a scratch on me or the car. The 97 Avenger lived to drive another day, and I was alive. But how many of you know instant prayer, right? There, there are moments in life that, that turn into instant prayer. There, there are times that, that lead to desperation, and they cause us to pray. And as we look into all that, it, that 2020 has to offer us, I think that we can take a different approach. Instead of reacting to life, we can take a proactive approach to God by our prayers and with our prayers. And, and what I'd like to do 
today is I would like to look at uh, a, a prayer by a man in the Bible, and, and it's not really well-known. Usually, it's kind of random. If you're reading the Bible, you'll, you'll probably skip over it, but it, it, it's a prayer that we can really learn a lot from, and we can apply a lot to our lives as we look into all that God has for us in 2020. And so we're, we're talking about prayer today, and I, I want to give you the big idea for today. So write this down. When we pray big things, God responds with his best. Say that with me. When we pray for big things, God responds with his best. So we're, we're talking about a guy named Jabez, okay? How many of you have ever heard of Jabez before, the prayer of Jabez before? Some of us here at the North Campus, at the South Campus. Okay, so Jabez in the original language in the Hebrew it was pr- pronounced Yabates. Can you say that with me? Yabates. Okay, this, this is what it means. He causes pain, sorrow, or grieving. So we, we have to assume something happened in childbirth that was uh, exceptionally painful. And his parents actually named him Pain. Like, that's pretty unfortunate, right? <laughs> like, to have that name. Have you, ever, have you ever met somebody, and as soon as you hear their name, you're like, that's unfortunate. And I'm really sorry that's your name. I found some examples of, of some unfortunate names. I wanted to share them with you today. We'll, we'll throw them up, uh, up on the screen. Here's the first one. This is an Apple employee. His name is Sam Sung, okay? <laughs> Sam Sung. How many of you know he is now capped at his organization? He's never going to be the spokesperson of Apple with Sam Sung. Okay, let's go to the next. Dr. Joel Rolo Coaster. Okay, <laughs> It's a real name. Rolo coaster. Maybe it's a maybe it's a Royo. I'm not we know we're not we're not certain. Ro, Rolo coaster. That's actually a pretty incredible name. I mean, I don't even know how unfortunate that is. And the third third and final, Pterodactyl. That's her name. Her name is Pterodactyl. That's unfortunate. <laughs> and can we throw that back up? She's cheering. I wonder what she sounds like. You know, do you think she's like living up to? Her name. So those, those are some unfortunate names. Jabez could definitely relate to these people with the unfortunate name. That's an unfortunate name. So there, there was something that had happened in childbirth, and, and, and we, can, we can learn that, we'll learn that he had experienced childbirth, his mom did. And, and so he, he w- was named and he was defined as one who causes pain. So now, his life is going to be dictated and defined by one who causes pain. And this, in Bible times, names were a massive deal. Names really determined a lot about your life. Sometimes it was because of a situation. Sometimes it was because of your family. Uh, But others, it it was really speaking something onto your life. And so, his parents were, were really labeling him for his life, and that was something that anytime anybody heard of him or talked to him, it was a reminder to him and to anybody around him of his name and his destiny. That's how big of a deal it was during that time. But Jabez, the great thing about Jabez is that he decided not to allow what defined him to determine his, his future. He, he decided, actually, for his life to contradict his name. And we, and we learn this in 1 Chronicles 4.9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. So this is the crazy thing about Jabez. This is, this is really a random uh, description of a man in a random place in the Bible. It's, it's in 1 Chronicles, and it's right along a, a genealogy. So it's, it's just a list of names. And, and the writer of First Chronicles decides to pause the, the genealogy to talk about a man named Jabez, and this never happens. So you, you, we don't know much about Jabez, and, and it's kind of random. If, if you're reading through the Bible, you'll probably skip over this verse. So there's really only two things we know about Jabez. One, that he was destined for pain and sorrow, but two, he lived a life pleasing to God. In other words, he didn't allow his circumstances to determine his future. He he didn't allow his reality to determine where he was going to go. So uh, he, he, he lived his life, positioned himself in a place to be able to pray big prayers. So that's 
that's what I wanted to do. I want to walk through this, this famous prayer of Jabez today. And this prayer, uh, people have written books about it. People have, have based their lives on, on this verse alone, on this prayer alone. And I wanted to uh, walk through it today and see how we can apply it today, see what we can learn from Jabez in this passage and in this prayer. So let's read it together. First Chronicles 4.10 says this, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And this is my favorite part about the verse. And God granted his request. See, this is, this is something that, that Jabez is now, he's, he's positioned himself living a life honoring to God, living, living a life that, that is against what, what has been defined in his life. And, and we can learn some things from this prayer. Although it seems simple, you might skip over it. When you understand what, where he was coming from, when you understand what he prayed, and how he prayed, we can apply this to our life. First thing that we can learn from Jabez is that he prayed for a blessing. Jabez prayed for a blessing. Now, as he's praying, this, this is one of those scenarios that we were talking about earlier that, that he is really praying. I mean, he's crying out. He's praying. Let's look at it in the first uh, part of verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me. And, and here's what he's talking about. This is a blessing that in, in the original language, the word blessing is barak. And he actually writes it twice. He says it twice. So he, it literally means bless, bless. God, I'm praying that you would give me a blessing, blessing. He's saying, I, I want you to give me a blessing more than I could ever even handle on my own, more than I could even contain. A, a blessing that, that is so big for me that, that I, I don't even know what to do with it. That's the kind of blessing that he's asking for. And with, without context, you're like, man, Jabez seems like he's getting a little greedy, like he's asking for things that he can't even handle. He, he's asking for, for things that he, he doesn't even know what to do with it. So where does this even come from? Where, why would he be asking for this blessing? He's, and he's remembering what David wrote in Psalm 119, 68. We read this all the time here. You are good, and what you do is Good. So Jabez is remembering that the God that I serve, he actually has a desire to do good in my life. This is what David also said in Psalm 103. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits. Somebody say all. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. This is what Jabez is remembering. He's saying, no, when I pray, I'm going to make the most of my prayers. I'm not just going to lift up empty words, but I'm going to pray to a God who I know loves me. I know has good things in store for me, and I know it actually gives him pleasure to bless me. He actually created me so that I could spend time with him and so that he could bless me. Psalm 103, later on in that chapter, he says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. He's saying, man, I'm a child of God. I have a relationship with him. So there is a love that he has for me. And there is a desire that he has to give me good things, to bless me in my life. And it's something that has, that's a plan that's been on my life since before the world ever began. It's a plan that, that God has for my life. Look at what Paul says in Ephesians 2. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do, say it with me, good things he planned for us long ago. The, the reason that we were even created was for us to have communion with God and to experience his blessings. So we actually can unlock the blessings of God for our lives when we pray. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing that God already has prepared for us. He's literally just waiting. And when we pray prayers, he gets excited about giving the blessing that he's already ready to give us. 
Paul goes on to say, now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. He's saying, now, if you can think of something, I'm talking your wildest imagination, your wildest dreams, if you can ask for big things, guess what? God can do more. God God can give you a blessing in your life that is so far beyond anything that you could even think up. He can accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Jabez is reminded of who God really is. And when we're reminded of who God really is and what God really does, it affects our prayers. It changes our prayers. It leads our prayers. That's why Jabez was able to pray for a blessing, an overwhelming blessing, an uncommon blessing. Second thing we can learn from Jabez is that he prayed for his border. So Jabez, he's he's understanding that he's, he's praying for his territory to be expanded. Look at this in the second part of verse 10. He says, and enlarge my territory. Now, in this time, land would have been really, really important. Land would have meant influence. Land would have meant uh, wealth. Land would have meant responsibility. And so anytime somebody had more land, he understood it was more to take care of. So he's saying, God, I I pray that you would bless me with a blessing more than I could ever contain or take care of. I pray that you would expand my territory, expand my border. And he understood, and he knew, just like the great philosopher Stanley who wrote Spider-Man, with great power comes great. Of course. He, he knew that, like, when, when I'm asking for more, I'm asking for a blessing. I'm asking, God, I know you have more for me. And as I'm asking for this more that you have in store, I know that that's going to be more to take care of. And how many, of, as you look into 2020, you're like, I don't know if I want more. I, I can't take care of what I got right now. <laughs> like, I don't, know if, I don't know if I can be trusted with more. This is, this is where J, the prayer of Jabez really starts to build on itself. He's praying for a blessing, and then he defines that blessing. God, I pray that you would bless me with, with a blessing that is so far beyond me. I pray that you would expand my border and, and give me more than I could ever contain on myself. There, there are things that, honestly, if God gives you what you ask for, now your character has to back it up, right? Like, if it, what, we're about to go into prayer and fasting next week, and, and we're going to be praying for things. And if God gives you those things, now you have to steward it. And we can't do that on our own. That's why it can be scary sometimes to pray for things, because God will give it to you, and now you have to steward it. And and Jabez understands this. He's saying, God, I pray that you would give me a blessing. Expand my border. And I know that I can't do this on my own. I can't take care of this on my own. And that's why the third thing that we learned from Jabez is that he prayed for boldness. Jabez knows that as I'm stepping into this blessing, as I'm stepping into all that God has for me, I know that God has a a, a plan to bless my life, to give me more. I I know that if he actually gives me what, what I'm asking for, that I can't take care of it on my own. So I'm praying for boldness. In the third part of verse 10, he says, let your hand be with me. This is what Jabez is saying very intentionally. He's saying, God, I don't wanna take another step. For for us in here, I don't wanna take a step into 2020 without your hand being on me every single step of the way. This isn't a relationship where we walk to God, we receive his blessing, and then we walk away by ourselves. It's a continual walking with God, linked arm in arm, and he is giving us sufficient blessing as we need, and he's continuing to give us more. And so how many of you know that you walk a little bit differently when you know who's walking with you, right? You talk a little bit differently. You think differently because you know that it's not up to you. So we can pray these massive prayers. We can pray these bold prayers to God, knowing that when he gives it to us, he's going to be walking with us all the time. And we can pray differently because we are fundamentally and foundationally different. That's, that's the point. He's giving us boldness to be able to to walk through what he's calling us, to fulfill what he's called us to. 
And, and there's, there's a fourth thing that, that we can learn from Jabez, and that's this, that he, he prayed for sin and shame to be broken. This, this is Jabez. Remember, the, the guy who is literally named sin and shame, the, the person who causes pain. That's his name. And look at what he prays. This is one of the craziest parts of this passage of Scripture to me. The fourth part of verse 10. And keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. You know what that means? That'd be like me praying, God, I pray that you would keep me from harm so that I could be free from Zach. He's literally saying, God, can you keep me free from myself? Can you protect me from myself? Because I know when left to myself, I'm going to mess it up. I know when I'm left to myself, I will fall short. I know that when I'm left to myself, I will fail. So this, this verse, is, this prayer, it's continually building on itself. He's saying, God, give me a blessing, a blessing that I can't even contain. Expand my border and, and, and give me boldness. And ultimately, save me from myself. Keep me from myself. Keep me from, from evil so, so that I won't cause pain. Keep me from, from what ultimately has been in my life. Because for some of you, you, you know exactly what, what the enemy is calling you. You, you know what, what's been placed on your life, and that's what Jabez is looking at. He's looking at what the definition that has been placed on his life. And the most powerful part of the passage and of the prayer is when the prayer is over, and that's in the last part of verse 10, and God granted his request. How many of you know that when Jabez was praying, God was listening, he was anticipating, and he was ready to give Jabez exactly what he was asking for. And, and as, as we're reading this today, as we're applying this to our lives today, there, we, we can all relate to something that has become a reality for us. We, we can all relate to something that, that maybe the enemy has put a label on our lives, a, a marking the enemy has marked you with something. Maybe you're sitting in here today, and, and the enemy has marked you with anxiety. He's labeled you with anxiety. Maybe the enemy has marked you, labeled you with depression. Maybe the enemy has marked you with, with fear or that, that one decision that, that compounded into a bunch of other decisions that you feel has ruined your life, and, and you feel like it's, it's marked you. That's what the enemy would love for you to think, is that you are marked and you are defined by what has happened to you or the things that in the decisions that you've made. But God wants to remind us that before you were ever deceived into thinking you were something else, he already wrote your name. He already knows your name. The reality is Jabez was named one who causes pain but he was known as strong and honorable. See, you can be named one thing by this world, but known something completely different by your father. Because you can be named one thing by the enemy. You can be named one thing in this world, but known by your father in heaven as a child of God, one who holds the victory. It's not a victory that you will attain one day. It's a victory that you already have at your grasp because God has given you a name. He's given you a purpose. And God knows that you have been named something by this world, but you're known by him. And that's ultimately all that matters. We have the victory in him. We don't have to fall to what we've been named by this world, but we can trust that we're known by God. He's given us our ultimate definition. And we can sometimes look at our reality and think that that's where we're going to land. As, as we approach 2020, we can look at it and say, man, I, I know that there are certain realities about my life that I cannot get away from. There are realities that I can't escape in my life. It's a reality that it's staring me right in the face. I can't, I can't look too far down 2020 because I can't look past the blaring reality in my life, the definition that I've now come to believe about myself. 
So I can't look forward. So how can we take the prayer of Jabez and, and apply it to our lives? I, I want to keep it simple because it's so simple, but it's so profound when we can truly start to think, act, and pray like Jabez. First thing is pray big prayers in 2020. As you look into 2020, all, all that's going to happen, there, there are going to be decisions that you're going to make, but guess what? God's already written your story. Before you were ever created, before you were ever born, God already had it in mind. So you can pray big prayers for your family. You can pray big prayers for your finances. You can pray big prayers for your health. Here, here's the prayers I'm talking about. I'm talking about the prayers that when you are praying them, it scares you to even say the words because you know that, man, could this even happen? Could this even be a reality? I don't know life other than what I'm living in right now. I don't know life other than the reality that I'm facing at this moment. And I'm telling you, God loves it when we pray big prayers. He, he is waiting in heaven to unlock the blessing that he already has for your life. God smiles when we pray big prayers. This is why it's so huge that as we have First Wednesday happening at both campuses uh, this Wednesday, that we as a church commit to praying together. So I wonder what it would be like if you said, man, for me and my family, we're not going to miss one First Wednesday in all of 2020. We're, we're going to come together and understand the importance of, of prayer. Man, can you pray on your own? Sure, and, and we hope that you do. But Jesus says, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. There, there's something that happens when we come together as a church and we say, we're a family, we're an army, and we're going to pray big prayers for God. We're going to pray prayers that actually make a difference. We're actually going to stand in the gap. We're going to intercede on behalf of 2020 and say, not on my watch. If it's up to me, I'm going to pray big prayers. I'm going to pray bold prayers because I know those are the prayers that move the hand of God. As we know, 21 days of prayer and fasting is starting up here next Sunday. Man, taking a step to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give up something so that I can gain everything that God has for me. Remember, we talked about earlier, there is a plan for your life in 2020. It's already done. It's already written. All you have to do is step into what God has for you. The blessing is not in what we think. The blessing is not in what we feel. The blessing's not in a job. The blessing is in obedience. And we can pray big prayers in 2020, knowing that, man, if I can just give up something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to circle it, I'm going to write it down, and I'm going to pray that God can do what only he can do, that he would bless it in a way that I couldn't even come up with, that he would expand my border in a way that, that I could never even think of, that he would give me boldness to pray these big prayers. And as we do, as we're praying these big prayers, God will look at them and he will give you what you're asking for when you not only pray big prayers, but the second thing that we can learn from Jabez is believe God will do it. Not only that he can, not only that he's supernatural in his power, he's omnipotent, he has this, he has this all-powerful God that we, that we serve, but that he will do it, that he actually desires to do it. And when we have the faith to believe, I'm not just offering up empty words, but man, I'm believing that God will do it. Look at what Jesus says to his disciples. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I've been doing, and they will do even greater things than these. You notice there in the verse, Jesus doesn't say, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me can do the works I've been doing, and they can do even greater things than these. This is Jesus talking to, to his disciples. They would have seen him do miracles. I'm talking like mind-blowing miracles. And Jesus is telling them that whoever believes in me will do the things that I've been doing. But guess what? He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name 
and I will do it. What kind of what kind of faith are you praying with your prayers? What what are your what do your prayers sound like? What would happen in 2020 if we if we started to look at God like Jabez looked at him? Looking at God and saying, "I know that you have something for my life. It's bigger than me." And Lord, I pray that you would bless me with a blessing that I can't even understand. A prayer of proactive desperation. You're praying in desperation before you know you you even need it. You know, about a year and a half ago, there there were some prayers of desperation that my wife and I were praying. We were we were working at a church, and Springfield is a great church. It was our home church, and uh, it, we we had our dream job. And my wife was a school teacher at a local high school, and uh, we're living the dream. We had just built our dream house. It was great. And God began to stir on our hearts that we should take a step, take a step of faith. And that's all he revealed to us. I I, I can only describe it as a supernatural release. And so we did. We took a step. We said, okay, Lord, if this is what you have for us, then we'll do it. And then immediately what followed was months of silence. We had no clue what we were going to do. We had no clue how we were going to make money, how we were going to work. I like signed up to be an Uber driver, a substitute teacher. I was like, let's, let's try and figure this out. And I, remember, I remember kneeling at my bed every single night and praying desperate prayers, saying, God, I don't... I don't know what you have for us, but but I pray whatever you have for us, that it would be better than we could ever imagine. I pray that we step into a dream job. I pray that we step into a house better than than we could ever imagine. I I pray, and I begin to pray these prayers. Why? Because God cares about the things that you care about because he cares about you. But as well, he already has it planned. So I started praying prayers that I didn't even know the answer to. I didn't even know the question to. I said, God, I just, I just need your blessing. I just, I just want more of you. And it was a prayer of desperation. And I'm here to tell you that, that a year and a half later, that with God providing, he provided a job for my wife. He provided a house here. He provided a dream job here at Summit Park Church and a church family that I could have never even imagined. God's promises are true. And when you pray big prayers, he will answer. He will respond and he will give you his best. It just takes us saying, God, less of me. I have my own ideas, I have my own plans, I have my own opinions on what we feel like we should do. But ultimately, I know that you've already written your story. I can remember praying for having God's best and having no clue what it meant. And so for you today, I don't know the details of your life, But God does. He knows exactly what he wants for you in 2020. He knows the decisions that you're going to make. He knows the hardships that you're going to face. And he knows the blessing that he has for you. And so here's what I want us to do. All across this room at the North Campus, would you stand to your feet at the South Campus? Would you stand? And I want us to close here in a moment with with our own prayer, just like the prayer of Jabez. And if, if you've got your spouse, you can, you can grab a hand. If you've got family members, you can maybe put an arm around. And, and let's, let's, let's pray together with a free hand. Would you just put it in a posture, ready to receive the blessing that God has for you? And once you do this, I'm going to pray a prayer. Would you repeat after me at North Campus, at South Campus? Just repeat after me, and let's pray a prayer a blessing for 2020. God, I come to you today and I'm thankful. 
I pray that you would bless me with an uncommon blessing. I pray that you would expand my capacity and prepare me for all you have in store. I pray that you would be near to me. Keep me from the enemy's plans and close to yours. I believe the best is yet to come. In my family, in my work, in my relationships, in my finances, in my health, and in my life. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we celebrate together and give God some praise?